Hi everybody and welcome back to my backyard once again. Today we have a super peculiar drone as you can see from the box and it's from Recon FPV which is HGL RC long range subdivision. This drone is called the Recon Y6 and Y6 is actually the shape of this drone. It's a hexacopter Y shaped as you can see. Let's open the box and I'm very very curious to try this new shape of drone. The box inside is super well laid out. You have the drone, you have eight propellers which are 5 inch T-mount Gemfan 5125 and on the other side the accessories. Stickers, a manual QR code and here the propeller direction card and I have to look very well at it because it's the first time I try a drone like this. Two battery straps and a bag with extra screws, the GoPro mounting screw and an antenna 3D printed TPU mount. And boom, finally this is the drone. <laughs> it looks crazy. I can't wait to fly. It's 200 millimeter this way, 180 this way. This is the O3 version and once you put the propellers on it will be around 298 grams, which is not heavy at all considering it has six motors instead of four, but only three arms which saves weight. Crazy. Carbon looks very nice. You have five millimeter thick individual arms. They are sandwiched between a two millimeter top and bottom plate and this carbon plate is two millimeter as well. Also they provide a landing pad to put your battery in between and this is two millimeter as well. Very very nice addition. Many people have concern on putting battery under sling. This may offer some protection. The motors are HGL RC 2004 1800 kV and they look very nice. Look at those coils and they are very lightweight. The motors are pushed by a F7 all-in-one flight controller with six integrated ESCs, 45 amps. This is the fixed XC60 connector. It has a capacitor on the top, a very tiny GPS, which is amazing for a drone that's supposed to do long range, including these two very long antenna that are way over the drone considering the battery is down here, they should provide incredible signal. Oh, my put the propeller on, it's finally bound and ready to fly. It looks incredibly wicked like this. It's even better than a dead cat too because you have this angle right here and you don't get the propellers in your camera view and also in your GoPro view. And on the website they claim this design is even more efficient than a regular 5 inch drone. So I'm very very curious about that. Also it should cruise a lot faster. Wow, a lot of bold claims to test out. The camera angle is fine but it starts from like 15 degrees and it goes very very high. But I wish it went 5 degrees so if you want to fly very slow it will do it. But of course this is a cruise drone so it makes sense it starts from a little bit higher. First flight I'm gonna use the O3 and in the second flight I'm gonna put an action cam on top and see how it changes. Okay we are flying. The camera angle is a little bit high but as you can see in the very bottom corners I had to, lo to, to raise it because uh, it shows the, the canopy basically. Again yeah my gripe is with the canopy. They should have designed it to to be at lower camera angle because I'm not used to flying like this. I don't know why it's completely windy right now, but the noise is very weird. <laughs> For the first time flying this drone. So the GPS, the, the speed, takes a couple of minutes to, to call the lock and then hot lock a few seconds. Let's push. Wow, it's a screamer for sure. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! The rates are just uh, crazy. I was not expecting that. Yeah, I have to add a little bit of expo and lower the rates. Maybe having more propellers, especially on this axis. <laughs> It's crazy. It seems... Oh! I, I was saying it seems locked in, but it didn't like the inverted EO spin. I don't know, I am exploring a, a totally new kind of drone to me. Uh, it moves differently. It, it doesn't feel like a quad. Of course, it's... 
It's not a code. It's behaving nicely now. The thing is, it's with this camera angle, it's crazy fast, and it's hard to to control for me. I don't want to lower it. I don't know why they didn't decide that the camera angle is a little bit too high. So it doesn't seem uh, incredibly. I don't know why we have low signal with this. Yeah, it's a uh, hundred and thirty probably kilometers per hour. And the cruising speed is a lot because we are at 45 degree angle. That's why it, it cruises faster. I don't know. The claims seem a little bit uh, minimal to me. Yeah, for sure you have more carry capacity with two extra motors, but I don't think it's going to be more efficient. Or cruise faster. The, the extra cruise speed is given by the camera angle in my opinion it cru yeah like this it cruises very fast and uh, it uh, you can see it's at yeah 40 percent throttle 46 now depending on the wind but we have been flying for four minutes already oh my god the time went by very very fast Yeah, it flies differently. It's a 300 grams drone excluding the battery. So it's... The inertia is not a lot. Feels more like a, a Razer. Except it doesn't go as fast as a Razer. I'm gonna... I, I don't wanna destroy it because they only give you two extra propellers and I don't have this kind of propellers. I, I have to finish the review. It's not a... Acro drone anyways, and uh, it doesn't feel particularly good at doing acro. Maybe it's the camera angle. I, I'm really not used to flying 45 degrees. It's, it's weird. They, uh, the input are mixed. Let's finish this flight with these two broken propellers. Every time you crash with this drone, probably you're gonna break two propellers. Luckily, I have the replacement for them, but I cannot break any more propellers, as I was telling you. Battery flew for around 5 minutes and 30 and could have gone probably for another 2 minutes with this mixed pushing and uh, cruising. So, I, I don't know, it doesn't seem more efficient than a 5 inch really. Or if it is, it's negligible. Let's put a GoPro and see how it handles the extra weight. The Action 4 is there and with the 1800 milliamps it is 750 grams, which it's quite lighter than a regular quad 5 inch that uh, is like 800 to 850 grams with this camera and battery. And that's probably where the extra efficiency comes from. But also there is no space whatsoever to put anything more than what's already on the drone. The space is very constrained. The camera is basically almost touching the blades, pros and cons to everything. My biggest gripe again is this camera mount. It should be much more open and allow the camera to be lower. And already like this, you're gonna see it will show a lot of the canopy and that's very bad. But at least we have this camera to record with. I guess it didn't lock in the satellites yet, but well, I'm gonna fly anyways. So the camera angle is a little bit more manageable now. You can see the canopy at the bottom of the DVR. With the GoPro, it feels a little bit tamer as well. Okay, let's not crash. So it doesn't seem like there is jello or excessive shake. It comes down pretty fine too. Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad drone. And is it... Is it snappier than a regular 5 inch with a GoPro? So sometimes it, it seems like it overshoots the maneuvers. So the tuning, I don't know how it goes for a Y6 drone. I never had experience with it. But 
Depending on the angle you get, it can be either very precise or go out of, uh, of lock, in my opinion. That's the, the feeling I'm getting. It must be weird not having the extra diagonal push, basically. It cannot account for that. So if, if you are uh, pushing 100% forward like this, very fast. Like this, very fast. But if you give a, a, an angle... Uh, okay. It's just... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it flies differently from a regular... Yeah, it flips, okay, I'm trying to do an inverted... You see? It flips. I, I am giving 10% and it just keeps flipping. It's, uh, it's crazy. I wanted to... Uh, how do you call this trick where you, you just go inverted and you fly... You see? Uh, okay, it doesn't like that at all. Uh, with a regular 5-inch quad, no problem doing that. So this is not a uh, acro drone. Don't don't try doing acro. It's not. Uh, you cannot uh, foresee what's gonna happen. Basically, it's not uh, reliable. It doesn't always do the same thing over again. Again, let's go back to the claim that it cruises faster. And for sure, even with this lower camera angle, it's not slow, but it doesn't feel faster than a five inch to me. It was faster because it was a 45 degree angle it's probably noisier than a five inch and maybe i can give you that is a little bit more efficient but i would argue that the 50 to 100 grams less that's why it's uh, more efficient you, you are moving less mass i don't know how having uh, one motor more would be more efficient it's, it's a viable drone don't get me wrong you just have to use it for uh, for what it's good for. Probably it's a, it's a good drone to do medium to long range, maybe. It's like a more compact six inch. They claim it's gonna be doing uh, 20 minutes with a 3000 milliamps lithium ion because you have 50% uh, more uh, uh, propeller surface. It's gonna be more efficient, consume less amperage for that. And if you have a GoPro on, probably it's gonna be uh, doing a little bit more than 10 minutes. But I see the voltage going down with cruising flying because I'm, I'm, I don't wanna try accruing too much. For sure with a GoPro, with a Action 4 or whatever you wanna call it, it's a little bit tamer for these maneuvers. Yeah, but it, it is not made to do that. Low battery. Yeah, five minutes and 30 of flying, low battery. I didn't even fly crazy. If you see the reviews I do with the regular quads, I start doing a lot more acro pushing and stuff. Time for my final opinion on the Recon Y6 from HGLRC. First thing first, I'm very excited to have tested it because first time with a Y6 Exacopter and it's a very rare shape of drone to find because usually you see quadcopters, regular Exacopters, maybe tricopters back in the day with the oscillating back arm and uh, X8s, octacopters, stuff like that. But this one is very, very rare. And I expected this drone to be a very good all-rounder like a regular 5-inch quad, but instead it seems to be focused at a medium to long range cinematic cruising while keeping the size down, the weight down, because it's 300 grams, and also the power up. On paper it has 50% more power than a regular 5-inch because two extra motors. But that's on paper. When I flew in real life I couldn't really feel a lot of those advantages. It didn't feel more efficient to me, same efficiency as a 430 grams 5 inch like the Nazgul Eco right here. This drone was also faster, top speed felt like. Maybe this will cruise a little bit faster, but probably it's because of the camera angle. It is noisier than this drone, it flies worse because 
For some things it's fine, but then when you start doing some other maneuvers, it just loses it. I don't know why, but of course it's a hard platform to tune in my opinion. This is much more tested. Maybe it has a little bit extra power, like it hovers with less throttle and it accelerates quicker with the camera on top, but that's about it. And it feels like the advantages are minimal while the cons are a little bit bigger. Not only what I said until now, but also think this is stupid, but when you crash, you break two propellers. It's minimal, but it's a con. Also, good luck finding a replacement board for this. It's an all-in-one with six ESCs. I mean, with a regular quad, you have 10,000 different boards you can choose. Here, I don't know, I couldn't even find the instructions with the pinout for this specific board. Looking at this drone without comparing with others, it's very well built. I like the way they puzzled everything together, good choices with limited space. The only thing I don't like, otherwise it would have been perfect for a Y6, is the camera mount. This, I think, is stupid. Just allow me to have from five to whatever you want. I cannot fly from 45 and up, even though it's a cinematic long-range drone, allow me to be a little bit more versatile. I think this will be an easy fix if they want to fix it, because it's a TPU piece, just change the design and everything will be fine. And it will be the best it can be for a Y6 drone. And I feel like this drone on itself is well done. The problem is when you compare it with the others. And that's where it starts to be... Mm. Because my reasoning is I don't carry 10,000 drones with me when I go out. I carry one big, one medium and one small most of the times. So if I have to choose between a one-trick pony and a drone that does everything basically, which one am I gonna choose? This I feel like it can do mostly the same stuff, just add the GPS in here and this becomes a medium to long-range cruiser. But then, if the opportunity arises, lower the camera angle, cruises very slow. If I need to do some tricks, I can do some tricks. You see my reasoning. The only thing that this drone doesn't have is the cool factor. When you pop out something like this, people will be incredibly curious to what it is because they are not used to this shape. And I praise HGRC for trying to do something new. I love innovation in the FPV field and I want to see more companies try <laughs> new stuff. Because we are all sick of the same four-motor quadcopter setup. But maybe there is a reason why this setup is so popular, after all. And as always, remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video. I'm very curious to know what you think about this contraption right here. I think it's nice, but I wish it was a little bit more versatile. And as always, if you want to buy something, check out the links in the description below. You help this channel a lot. Stay safe and happy flying. Bye.